If you're a designer, you need to pivot right now. This is not a fad or a false hype. I really think it will keep gaining traction across the industry because building products is fundamentally changing. So the next natural step for UI UX designers is designing automation experiences with dynamic UIs that adapt to the user needs. And that's where AX design comes in. I'll guide you through everything you need to know to get started and stay ahead of the curve. Hi, my name is Jad. This channel is where I share my latest AI tools and workflows for building products. Today, I'm gonna share with you the result of my deep research and analysis on the product design industry and its future. AX design or agent experience design is working with dynamic interfaces built with AI automations. And to design those, you need to start with a solid structure design, then build it with an automation tool and finally surface it to the user with a dynamic UI. So AX design is an emerging discipline focused on designing the user experience for interaction with AI agents. It goes beyond the traditional UI UX because the user is interacting with a dynamic interface and not a static UI. Think of it as the difference between driving a car like the traditional UX or instructing a self-driving car to take you to a destination. That would be agentic design. In the second scenario, the user's role shifts from direct control to delegation, goal setting, and supervision. AX design answers the question, how do we make AI agents understandable, trustworthy, and effective for humans? In this video, we will focus on building those automations. And in the next video, we will focus on key principles for AX design. So make sure you're subscribed to stay updated on this industry shift. So today we're gonna start planning on a whiteboard. Then we'll build the automations with N8N. And finally, we will build the UI using an AI coding tool to connect everything together, making sure that the user journey is covered at all times. Let me show you how to set up your own N8N server for the lowest cost possible. Then we'll jump into the design and the build. So if you go to N8N's website, you'll notice that the cost is very high. It will cost you $24 per month, and that's just the basic plan. I'm going to show you how to get even more features for way less. All you need is to self-host it with Hostinger. I have a link in the description that will take you to the Hostinger VPS plan dedicated for N8N. Click the link in my description to go to the Hostinger page for N8N. You can see here you have multiple options for self-hosted N8N. It will cost you way less and you get access to the full experience of N8N. This is exactly the same as using it with the N8N hosting, but you're self-hosting it for way cheaper and you're using everything in N8N as if it was hosted by them. So this is a no-brainer. Here you can pick the $5 plan KVM1 or KVM2, which is the one I'm using, and this includes everything I need. This will be like your own computer in the cloud running 24-7. And once you select your plan, don't forget to enter coupon code AI Tooltip to get an even lower price when you sign up for one year or two years. So if you sign up for 12 months, it will only cost you $7.6 per month. And that's the KVM2 plan. You can get an even lower price with KVM1. So make sure you enter my code for the cheapest possible price. And once you sign up, you will see a manage app button at the top of your page. All you have to do is click that. It will take you to the N8N platform where you can create your account. Now, before we start with N8N, let's jump into a whiteboard to start planning. You can do it on a pen and paper or in Fig Jam if you want. The app we're gonna create today solves the problem of having a messy collection of links and transform them into a smart library that you can chat with. So the intention here is to have a very simple UI with just one text input field where the user would enter either a link or plain text. And the N8N automation will figure out if it's a link or if it's just plain text, and we'll perform the associated workflow with that. So the first job of any agent is to understand what the user wants. We didn't build two input fields here. We built one input source that intelligently routes the user intent. This if node is the agent's first decision. So if it is a link, we're gonna get AI to analyze the link content and then give us the suggested tags and we'll organize it based on the contents. An agent that works in a black box is untrustworthy. So here our agent shows its work by presenting a summary and suggested tags. It's explaining 
how it interpreted the content. This builds trust and gives the user a chance to correct the agent's understanding. We're gonna add a step called human in the loop or HITL, and this is crucial for AX design. This adds transparency and trust because you're getting the human or the user to approve or edit the output of the AI. The most critical principle of safe and effective AX is keeping the human in control. Our agent is a partner, not a dictator. It automates the tedious work like reading and summarizing and tagging, but refers to the user for the final and critical decision. The confirm button is the most important button in this entire application from an AX perspective. So at this point, the user can either click confirm all or perform any edits to the generated content. Every interaction is a feedback opportunity. When the user edits the tags before confirming, they are correcting the agent. This is a simple form of feedback. This learning system takes those corrections and saves them to the database and uses them to improve future suggestions. And then the other path is when the user enters plain text inside of the field, AI will pull all of the content of the bookmark library and it will answer based on that knowledge. It's like a mini LLM trained on your bookmark library. So take your time to draw the user journey for your idea. And this is not just a traditional flowchart. This will dictate how we build the automation. Once you have a solid plan, go to your N8N interface, and here you will start building the steps one by one. Now for my project, this is what my automation looks like. I have here the main path that goes through and decides if it's a link or not. And if it's a link, it will go and proceed to scrape the website and get the content. And then AI will add the tags and the summary for it. And then it will push it back to the UI. The other path is if it's not a link, it will grab all of my bookmarks from my Google Sheets database and it will give it to the AI to analyze and respond to my request. And then I have another small path here that will continue from here. After the human in the loop decides to save it, this small path will only take that information and save it to the database. And then lastly, I have a fourth path here that I came up with while I was building the platform. And this workflow is only for pulling the bookmarks from the database to display everything to the user if they want to see all of their bookmarks. So you can see here how we're building this inside of N8N with the database inside of N8N. So everything is secure here and we're not surfacing any critical information to the UI. Because as you may know, AI coding tools can be less than secure. But if you're doing this, your UI will be isolated and your workflow will be secure. Now to start building, you need the help of an AI chat assistant. You can use ChatGPT. I'm using Manus here, and this helped me a lot to build everything. All you have to do is explain your goal and attach your flowchart, and AI will give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to achieve your goal with N8N. This is also the best way to learn what each node does because there's a lot of options in N8N, but you only need a few of them. And honestly, this unlocks a whole new automation field for me as a designer. I'm using AI to build AI automations, and it's a huge power to have. So take advantage of it. And please, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments and I will answer everything as usual. So here I explained my goal and I gave it the flowchart that I have and it understood exactly what I need to achieve. And it gave me a full plan that I can follow. It suggested three workflows and it gave me details on each workflow, what nodes I need to add and how to set them up. So I can copy and paste some parts of these suggestions into the nodes and then here's the second flow, which is very short and the third flow. And then it explained how I can connect it with the UI using an AI coding tool. So all you have to do is go and create a new workflow. And this is your interface inside of N8N. You start by adding a trigger node. A trigger node can be a form submission or a chat input. There's a lot of options. But in this case, because we're building a UI for it, we're gonna need a webhook trigger node. All you have to do is click on the plus and then search for it here. And when you see the little lightning icon, that means it's a trigger node. You add this, and then you can set up the parameters inside of the node here. All you have to do is copy what AI suggests, and you'll be good to go. Now I did exactly that here. I entered the parameters that AI suggested, and then I moved on to the next node. This node here, for example, will check the input from the input field that the user entered. And if it contains HTTP, that means it's a link. It will direct it to the workflow of the link. And if it doesn't include HTTP, it will direct to the workflow for answering questions. And then when you're in the link path, we have a node that is HTTP request here. This one will scrape the contents of the website and it will output the data from it. And just so you know the basics of working with N8N, 
When you're working on a node here, you have the input data on the left and the output on the right side. And you can see that when you test the workflow. So here, if I say execute workflow, it will wait for the UI to trigger this workflow. So you need to have the UI working in order to test this workflow. So when you click execute workflow, it will wait for the submission on the website. So for me, what I did here, I built out these nodes exactly as it told me, but I didn't fill them out completely because I needed the UI to be able to test the input and output of the data here. So after adding your nodes at this point, you need to start building the UI. Now to build the UI, you can use any AI coding tool like Lovable or Replit. I'm using Emergent here because I found it to cost less and it includes all of the features that other AI coding tools have. It is very powerful and it's agentic. It has an agent that will guide you and will test the app and will tell you exactly what you need to do to complete your project. The cool thing here is that the AI assistant that I was using gave me the detailed prompt to give to the AI builder. You can see here in the response, it gave me here part two, how to connect the UI with N8N and it gave me exactly the prompt that I need to use. All you have to do is copy this prompt and replace these parts here where it says your workflow webhook and you will grab that from your webhook inside n 8 So when you add a webhook trigger here, it will give you a custom link. All you have to do is copy this link and give it to your AI coding builder. So you will enter your first webhook here, your second webhook here, and your third webhook here. And then the AI coding tool will build this UI knowing that you have webhooks connected to it and it will work in a way that it will retrieve information and will give information back to the webhook. You don't need to know how any of this works. All you have to do is just follow the instructions. Our job here is to design the best experience for the user using these agents. It asked me some questions to clarify what it needs from me. And then I answered the questions and it kept on working. And then it gave me a UI that is connected to my N8N. Now, once you have your UI built, you can test your automation in N8N. All you have to do is click on execute workflow. And here you can see it's waiting for the trigger event from your website. So you can go back to your website and here enter anything. And once I submit here, you can see back in N8N it's working. And it's going through this path because this is not a link. I submitted plain text. So it's analyzing the plain text and going through all of these steps to grab my information from database and answer the question. There we go, we have a response. It said it couldn't find any information in my bookmarks to answer the question, hello. So it really is looking through my bookmarks. Now you should know that if you want to test this every time, you need to click execute workflow and then click on the submit button in the UI because this is in test mode. And you can change that from within the node here. You can give it a test URL or a production URL. Once you make sure that all of the test nodes are working, you can switch to production URL. And when you do that, you're going to have to click activate here at the top. And once it's activated, that means it's going to work continuously looking for those webhook calls and responses. So you don't have to click execute every time. That means it will be working 24 seven on your virtual server looking for those trigger calls. Let's try it again with the link, and then I'm gonna show you how you can see the input and output for each node. Let's paste a link here, and I'll click Execute Workflow, so now it's waiting for something to be submitted there. I'll go back here and I'll click Submit, and now you can see it took the top workflow, and everything is green, everything is working. Now once you go inside each node, you can see what came in, from the website and what it spit out for the workflow. So here it looked at the link that I gave it, it figured out that it's a link and then went on to the HTTP request here to scrape the website and grab all of the information from the code of the website. And you can see the output here is data. If you click on JSON, you can see all of the data that came from the website. And then on the next node here, we have the data coming in and then this node is parsing it to spit out the usable data only. And then we're giving all of that information to the AI node here. And in the AI node, I connected my Anthropic account and I'm using the Claude 3 Haiku model with this exact prompt to analyze this data. And I'm giving it exactly the format that I need the output in. And don't forget at any point, if you get stuck, you can just take a screenshot. Like here, I took a screenshot of the node. I wasn't sure what to fill out. I asked it and it gave me exactly what I need to fill out. So every time I'm not sure about something or when I need to verify that I'm doing the right thing, 
I just go back to the AI chat and I say, help me out, or is this correct or not, to make sure that everything is perfect. Like here, I verified that this is correct. It's set perfectly correct. You can see what my chat looks like here. I'm just adding screenshots and asking it questions. Here I said, let's move on to workflow two, and I want to use Google Sheets. So it gave me exactly what to do for implementing a database with Google Sheets. And of course, every project is going to be different. So having AI by your side is like having an expert teaching you step by step, which is beautiful. Now, when I tested this workflow for the link, it went through the AI model here. And the AI model gave me these organized data points that I can then spit out back to the UI. And this respond to webhook node will give everything back to the UI. And then if we check back in the UI, you will see that it gave me bookmark suggestions here. It gave me a content summary for the website. And crucially, it gave me the ability to edit those details. This is the human in the loop step that we added. So here I can go and edit anything. And if I want to just confirm everything, I can click confirm bookmark. But before I click it, because I'm still in test mode, I'm going to have to go to my second path in N8N and activate this workflow here. So this workflow here will save it to the database. I'm going to click execute and it's going to wait for me to click that button. Now I'll go here and say confirm bookmark. And you can see here it's all green. That means it worked. And here it says bookmark saved successfully. So now I can see the bookmarks in the UI by clicking here. And because the bookmarks are saved and retrieved through N8N, I'm going to have to click view all bookmarks to pull the bookmarks from my database. And that would be the third path here that I created. This one is called get bookmarks. It will go to the Google Sheets and respond to the webhook with all of the content of my bookmarks. So I'm going to click execute here. It will wait for me to click on that button. I'll click on it. And there we go. It gave me all the bookmarks that I have saved inside of my database. Let's give it one last test here. I'll go back to submit text. I'll click execute workflow here. And it's waiting for me. And I'll say here, what are my bookmarks about? And there we go. It gave me an answer. It says it appears your bookmarks cover a variety of topics. And it gave me everything that is included in my bookmarks. And I can ask a very specific questions and it will pull it from the contents of the bookmarks. This app was the perfect idea to demonstrate multiple AX design principles. We used the if node because an agent must first understand intent. We showed the user the summary and tags because transparency builds trust. We added a confirm button because the user must always have the final control. We let the user edit the tags because every correction is a chance for the agent to learn. And then we added a summarizer because a reliable agent must handle real world constraints. I hope this wasn't too hard. You can see how we designed a very minimal UI, but very powerful for the user. And this is exactly what AX design is all about. Users interacting with automations in a very easy and simple way while having full clarity on the things that matter. This was a simple project just to demonstrate to you how AX design works and how much power we now have as designers without having any coding skills. I'm very interested in knowing what you're gonna create with this new power. It's so much fun learning and building with N8N especially when you see those green nodes when everything works perfectly. Such a good feeling. If you want to learn more about AX design, I'm including new learning material in my community to get you started with agentic experience design, along with three other courses on UI, UX, and building products with AI. We'd love to have you as part of our growing community where we push the limits of AI.